everyone and welcome to another episode of Small Talk where we ramble on for a little bit at the beginning. Okay, or a, a lot. lot. <laughs> we and mostly just ramble on for the whole time. We do. And then we talk about some small box games. But yes. for those of you who don't know us, I'm Amy, all about the mechanics. This is my wonderful wife-to-be, Maggie, all about the you forgot theme. my name for the moment. There's like, um, Maggie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> As Maggie. if being locked down together isn't enough. <laughs> yeah. um, so for those of you who don't know, Melbourne, where we live in Australia, has gone into a temporary hard lockdown. Government Seven day circuit breaker, as yep. they call it. Government imposed lockdown, which means that we can go outside for two hours a day for exercise, mm -hmm. but mostly that we need to stay confined in our homes, Yes, uh, which you know is the right thing to do. We haven't had many cases here, but we have had a bit of an outbreak we in the enough. last yeah. couple of weeks. So yeah. uh, locking down, uh, which means that we're getting lots of games played, working mm. from home yeah. um, until we can go it's always back a silver outside. lining. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep today a little light because we're feeling like we want to be upbeat while we're yeah. locked down at home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, first of all, wanted to start with an update on the postcard on the situation. Postcards. So much joy. So much joy. Every time we go to our post box, it is just like, what's going to be yeah. there? And yeah. where is it coming from? And so I wanted to share some of the ones that we've received with you. So I've got a little pile and Maggie has a little pile. So mm. they're really starting to flow in now. Um, the first one is from a place in... <laughs> it's from a place. <laughs> it's from a place in Germany, mm. I want to say, called Tria. Mm. And Tria or Trier. And um, this we is, are going to be mispronouncing oh, all everything, of these places everything. horribly. So just I, avert your ears or brace yourselves. Yeah, and I have not been to many of these places. So yeah. that's why it's even extra special to get this. Now, Monica sent this through with a letter and I really enjoyed um, all of her reasons for playing board games. Mm. Um, especially, she says that um, her and her husband are in their late 60s and they feel that games train your brain. You have to memorize rules, think logically, stay concentrated. Secondly, you forget about all the adversities of life, like minor mm. ailments that turn up at our age, our age too. Um, and you get to do something together instead yes. of staring into your smartphones, which yeah. totally agree with That's you get true. to sit face to face interact with each other mm. and it gives you a new topic to talk about after 42 years of That's marriage wonderful, which yeah. is incredible monica yeah. i um hope one day we can say that we've been together that long <laughs> if we ever managed to start the counter <laughs> and get married. oh yeah that's true um and last but not least it's just great fun yeah. so true thank you so much for sharing this mm. and all of the different sites of tr tria trier trier Right. Yeah, but um, it looks hopefully beautiful. one day we can get uh, back to Germany, maybe for mm. Essen yeah. Spiel. Essen Spiel. Ooh. Um, anyway, should that, I should I do one? Yeah, you do one. So we have one from Mats from Uppsala in Sweden. Sweden. I've actually always wanted to go to Sweden, so this is very well exciting and Me also too. like oh, I want just to wait there. for them to win Eurovision and then we'll go there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Triple trouble. Um, they, they one, are. just because I want to visit. Two, for Eurovision. And three, because there's so many people now over there in Europe that would love to play games with. That, that is admit. true. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. That's, and this looks beautiful. That's Oops, sort of Salah. Like, yeah, Oops, yeah Salah. it does look really yeah. pretty. Um, and this is another one from Sis, who found this old 80s postcard in their book shelf of their home which is in Antwerp in Belgium now I have been to Belgium actually just once um, beautiful beautiful country um, but I have not been to Antwerp and this mm. looks like the main square or something but it is it really beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, so that is from sis and that is really beautiful we got um from sarah from ontario canada this beautiful uh, artwork called autumn foliage mm. which is pretty uh yeah that's, from canada that's what yes from canada mm. from ontario so thank you so much for that beautiful um from melvin now melvin is based in singapore mm. and melvin and i were hoping for um a singapore australia bubble so yeah. maybe we could meet at a con sometime hopefully that might happen one day but not at the moment by the looks of it um but interestingly he has sent us through um two postcards that are vintage postcards mm. um from this series called where is it the 
the age of innocence. So um, we've got two illustrations here. They're from the 1930s, which mm -hmm. is really incredible. Yeah. Um, and I'll come back to Melvin in a little bit because I want to talk about something else that yes. um, he sent us. Thank you, Melvin. Thank and you, Melvin. we got um, another postcard from Steve in, okay, I'm going to mispronounce this, Mount Tamalpe? 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 in California, California which again I love California so it's like and this looks this looks stunning looks beautiful yeah so can't wait to visit that would be a yeah an amazing place so thanks so much Steve thank you Steve um now this one was a bit of a mystery for about two seconds <laughs> um which is a photo of Jen on the beach collecting mm beach glass and if mm. those things ring a bell for you this is a postcard that uh, Richard Ham or Rado sends to his page his top tier patreons and he saw our video and included a postcard for us to go mm. up on our wall thank you so much Rado yes. um, it means a lot to us and uh, what a beautiful mm. plate what a beautiful photo that you've yeah, taken great first framing. of all yeah great it's amazing it's mm. amazing um, and this is of the Oregon coast where mm. um uh, Richard and Jen got to get away for a little bit of a trip together. So that is beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that yes. with us, Rado. Thank you. Um, my last one is a beautiful 3D postcard. Look at that. I don't know if you can, might have to do some uh, so cool. close up um, <laughs> of it. Um, this is from Hamburg um, and it's Alex over in Hamburg in Germany. And uh, I have been to Hamburg actually. We have, we went we, to Hamburg yeah. for a wedding and I've been there multiple times mm. actually, because one of my very good friends from university lives in Hamburg or is from Hamburg. Yes. So yeah, we've been there. It's beautiful. We this have. is amazing. This is what a great postcard. What a great postcard. Yeah. So, thanks so much, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Um, and the last one for today, is written completely in German. Yes. Um, so this is from Flo and um, they are sending it from Germany in a, oh wow, this is a great one. Friedrich Schaffen. I've probably said that completely wrong, mm. um, but I did have to use Google Translate on my phone <laughs> yeah. to be able to interpret and this. Yeah. And it didn't do a very good job of the translation, but my basic uh, the basic premise, I believe, of the postcard was that um, it is a bit old, old school, old fashioned to be sending postcards, but at least it kind of gives us something physical away mm -hmm. from our screens, which is why we wanted to do it, a physical reminder. Yeah. Um, but then Flo also said, although we need to stay near our screen so that we can continue making videos. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we <laughs> yeah. will keep doing that yes. as well. Um, so thank you so much, Flo. And thank, thank you, you yes. so much, everyone so who fun. has sent so us great. a postcard. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting them up on our wall. So mm. now that we've you know started to get a few of them from all different places in the world, we're gonna start putting them in our background on our mm. usual um, background in our little Thinker Thema studio. So yeah. thank you so much. It really means a lot to yeah. us. It's pretty awesome. Now today, um, to mix things up a little bit, uh, I think, I'm not sure we're gonna answer um, FAQs today or, or IAQs. What? But I have been putting together for today, because we're in lockdown and just for a little bit of fun, mm. a little quiz for Maggie. Now, one she thing- She has been very excited about I've been this. Really I have excited no idea about what's this. involved, but okay. uh, I did say, it doesn't have any trivia, does it? Because it's gonna be very It does have trivia, but, oh, but you should no. be able to answer this. So for all oh, of you who no. don't know, I'm from Australia. Well, actually, that's a lie. I'm from New Zealand, but I came over to Australia when I was very young, five years old, and very quickly dropped my New my Kiwi accent um, and very rapidly picked up a very strong Australian accent. Um, Maggie is not from Australia. You've no, been from South here America. 15 years? 16 Ooh. or close to 17 years 17 now. years. Yeah. Um, was originally from South America, moved to the States for yep. quite a while, living in New York and then came to Melbourne. And I am always amazed at how much Aussie slang Maggie still doesn't know. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Although you're pretty good. And I think you do sound quite Australian. I don't know, viewers, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do. You do yeah, have... sometimes I do say things in a very ochre a very... way. Anyway, interesting, interesting choice of mm, word there. Oka. Okay, so we're going to play a little quiz. Mm. So for the first half of the quiz, I'm going to read out a word in what I would call universal English. <laughs> okay. The oh, most, yeah. yes, it's like the a most universal to term. Australian. And I would like you to translate it to Australian. But those of you at home, you've been watching us for a little while, so you may have picked up some Aussie slang, mm. or you may have been seeing some Australian TV shows. You may have watched Kath and Kim. 
Oh, can I look at my? Can I look at my? Yes, um, that is an excellent show. <laughs> I'll pro intrude. Pro intrude. I should say Harper, there was there was a version you? that was remade for the US with Molly Shannon, uh, and I believe with Selma Blair. That was different. I feel like it did not translate. Well, no, because it's like, obviously, the, the beauty of Kath and Kim Australia is all the Australiana things mm. and all the... So, it, it, yeah, it's the Australian one. It's pretty that, accurate, too. Oh, uh-huh, extremely accurate. And it has, like, it hasn't dated. Like, no. They added it to Netflix recently, and, like, I just started watching one episode. And I was like, this is just so good like it's still just so spot on excellent anyway back to the game (laughs) so those of you uh, who are watching can play along at home Mm -hmm. so maggie when i say the word please pause give everyone an opportunity to try and get it at home and also so that i can think about and so you can think about it but pause before you respond are you ready yes okay you're translating i'm really nervous to aussie okay okay sweatpants tracky dax Mm, that yeah. was a little quick. Gotta Sorry, let people at home. Sorry, it's because I, I, there was a conversation earlier on that yes. made it very. Sorry, everybody. Um, tracky Dax. So if you, if you haven't heard that before, we refer to sweatpants as tracksuit pants, but in Aussie slang, that would be tracky Dax. Mm-hmm. Dax, yeah. Dax the pants. I did not know that. Well, so there, there you go. go. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'll wait. I'll, I just got too okay. excited. Okay. Too excited. Petrol station. Servo. Servo. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that is correct. Cigarettes. Oh, I can never say this. <laughs> Here it goes. You're thinking about it too hard. Dari. Mm. Dari? Mm. I, it almost sounds like a dowry. They buy, mm. buy, but what no, is it, it doesn't really. It's Dari's. She's saying the same thing to it's my not, ear. <laughs> it's not the same. Dari. Well, that's closer. Yeah. So I wore my, let's put a sentence together. I wore my tracky dax to the servo to get a packet of dowries. I mean, not me. Dowries. No. Yes, it's too long in the, in the, in the first syllable. It's dowries. I'm just putting it in a sentence so okay. that, you know, people at home can. A good way to say it would be, can I bum a dowry? What's bum? <laughs> that's another one. Bum would be to, to like, like have get one off you. Get one for free. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. take one from you. Um, I, I, there would be another word that I would accept for cigarettes. Uh, Two hours later. Um, what's another word for cigarette? Uh, smoko? No. <clears throat> Come on. Smokes. Okay, you got to think about it in terms of that smoke, sentence. Smoke, but it, that, that is, that is yeah, for a yeah, smoke. smokes, but sure. That's no, mm, I'm not accepting that one. No, I don't know. Ciggies. Oh, yeah, ciggy. Yeah, you're going to go, can I bum a ciggy? Yeah. Also, legit way of asking for yeah. that. We don't smoke again, but just putting that out there. Um, Okay, ready for the next one? Yeah. A liquor store. Uh, The Bottolo. Bottolo, good answer. Alcohol. Grog. Flip flops. Thongs. Very confusing coming from America. Yeah, you don't want to get that wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just got to put on my thongs. Make sure you bring my thongs. <laughs> what? what? Why? Why? <laughs> okay. Swimsuit. Swimmers? Is that what you're thinking? I will accept swimmers. There's or? also one that's a bit, mm, it's called, and it's for a specific type of swimmer, a budgie smuggler. Budgie smuggler. That is. We will. I'll put a, a an image of it. No, you will not. I no will. Image. I will put an image of an ex prime minister <laughs> wearing budgie smugglers for wearing budgie smugglers. No, we might get like censored or something. Um, yes. Okay. What, okay. Sorry. What did you say for swimmers? I said. Swimmers. Oh, sorry. You said swimmers. What did you say for swimmers? I can't even say it. What did for you say? Swimsuit. Swimsuit. Swimmers. Swimmers. Bathers. Bathers. Yeah. Also. Budgie smugglers for men, which are speedos. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, a speedo. Okay. And we should say what a budgie is. What <laughs> a budgie, budgie is a type of bird. Oh yeah. What what would be? The... Do they not have budgies overseas? Um, I yeah, I think so. But yeah, you know. budgies. Okay. Budgie Just smuggler. To clarify. Anyway, you can get a real me- mental image with budgie smuggler. That will never leave your mind. Okay. Like, it'll just singe itself. Next one. <laughs> a lot of. Ah. A heap. Yes, or heaps. Yeah, or heaps. Heaps, more heaps commonly. Heaps of. Heaps of. Yeah. Heaps of. 
which I think we do use a lot in videos. We because use I'm that. Office like, There's heaps of meeples. Yeah. We use heaps. 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 We use that heaps. Okay. Crowded. Shockers. Chockers. No, not shockers. Shockers. No, chockers. <laughs> chockers. Chockers. It is chockers at the servo. It is chockers <laughs> at the servo. Or yeah. another one that I would have accepted is chocker block. I was chocker block. Yeah. Chocker block. I don't know which where sounds like a chocolate block, which is not at all block. what it is. No. Yeah. So the servo was chocker block. block. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweater. A jumper. Mm-hmm. Mm. A toilet. Mm. Uh, dunny? Yes. Yeah, because I was going to say, we usually say the loo, but that's just British. Dunny. Dunny. It, you don't really say it. Like, it, no one's like, where's your dunny? Like, no, you don't. No. I mean, some I had places. to go to the dunny. I'm sure, yeah, actually. I, yeah. Mm. Depends on what, maybe not in your little I, I guess. part of the world. <laughs> I guess also I don't have a lot of stories about going the to dunny. the dunny or talking to people about it. Okay, here's go. some in quick succession, please. Okay. Afternoon. Arvo. Avocado. Avo. <laughs> Aggressive. Agro. <laughs> Definitely. Defo. Devastated. Devo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, garbage truck worker. The garbo? <laughs> Correct. Chicken. The chook. Mm -hmm. Mosquito. Mozzies. Drunk. Uh, mm, we say pissed, which is kind of like, but yeah. that's British as well, isn't it? I feel not like... sure, maybe. Some of these will have a lot of crossover. Actually, mm. some of them might be more Which widely is interesting used. interesting because often also piss can be like angry, like very angry. That is also pissed. true. You can be pissed off. Pissed off, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ready? I Here's don't know some... if any of these are curse words that I'm going to have to like censor. Or... <laughs> no, well, I guess I we're so. an over 18 channel anyway, so there's no <laughs> child content usually. Okay. But maybe I'll put a potentially uh, curse word. Pissed? Maybe. Mm. Okay. Here's some more in quick succession, please. <sighs> Breakfast. Brecky. Biscuit. Bicky? Great. Ah, I Bar should just think of that. <laughs> the... Barbecue. Barbie. What? A Barbie. I don't think really? you said it strange. <laughs> wow, you're going to have a Barbie. Is that a bit of your accent, Barbie? Yeah. Barbie, okay. Happy or pleased? Chuffed. Chuffed. I'm chuffed. Yep. Sunglasses. Oh, I do know a lot you of slang. You do know a lot slang. of slang, yep. Sunglasses. Sunnies. Great. And toilet dunnies. <laughs> candy. Um lollies. Yes. Okay, so hopefully everybody got some oh, of all of those I correct. This. You I are nailing this. <laughs> okay. Did so well. Now let's reverse it and you can translate. Ooh, okay. Are you ready? Is okay. that a sentence? Second stage. No. No, just words. Just words, a couple of sayings. Okay. Okay. Roadie. Like something that you take with you to have on the road. So it could be something to eat, usually a snack. Actually, I would say it's more commonly alcohol. Really? Yeah, to take a roadie. I don't drink, so if I'm taking a roadie, it's going to be like a, a Snickers or something. <laughs> a roadie, yeah, is something yeah. that you take for the road. Yeah. So, yeah, um, but usually alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, another, what's another meaning of roadie in Australia? Um, actually, I don't know if this is, but if it's um, from America, a roadie is usually someone that goes on tour with a band. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm thinking of. Oh, roadie. No, I don't know. What are you thinking of? Let's go on a roadie. Oh, like let's go on a trip. A road trip. A road trip. Short yeah. for road trip. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I can see that. Piss up. When you're going to be drinking a lot. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know that there's a lot. Okay. So one common theme here, there's a lot of alcohol related things because Australia is. is notoriously... Uh, and drink a lot. Uh, big on drinking. That We're not really drinkers. Yeah, but, but a lot of the slang is around that. But yeah. piss up is like a party, a party where you're going to be drinking yeah. as a piss up. Or but you can also use it if like, if like, for example, if there was an event, but no one like took it seriously. It's like, oh, that was a piss up. 
What? Yeah, like if we like we've done it for like meetings or things where people were meant to getting be getting work done and really nothing kind of happened. People just kind of wasted time. I've never heard that before. Well, you that heard is, it here first. Well, <laughs> maybe it's just in my land, in my mind. I will not validate that answer. Mm. Um, the next one is bludger. Uh, that's if you're <laughs> if you're not doing a task or duty that you should be do doing, or if you're like avoiding. Mm -hmm. Something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you're just generally lazy, I think. Yeah. If you're lazy, then you're a bludger. Well, you're avoiding work. I think that's probably how bludger. I... Bludger. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how common this is elsewhere, but to bail. Oh, bail is to give up or like jump off something. Bail on, I bailed on that. I left it. Like, oh, I bailed on the piss up. <laughs> bailed on the piss up. <laughs> yeah. I bailed on the roadie. The Guys, minute. I'm going to bail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is to leave. Um, whoop whoop. What a whoop whoop. What's a whoop whoop? <laughs> I don't know actually what a whoop whoop. I say it a lot. <laughs> what a whoop whoop. What is a whoop whoop? I say whoop whoop, but that's more like a whoop whoop. <laughs> no, wrong. I don't know what a whoop whoop is. No. If I, would you like me to use it in a sentence? Yes, please. Okay. Today. We're going... Oh, of course, out to whoop whoop. <laughs> yes. yes, like far, far away in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere yes. is whoop, whoop whoop. Of course, yes. Momentary brain fart. <sighs> okay, Moment. how about this? Maggie, can you stop carrying on like a pork chop? <laughs> I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> I know that we often say, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> it's just like... It's like what was it because like no one wants to eat the chopped liver like that's the thing that gets left behind <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know i don't know i'm, the origin I'm looking story. for a thematic uh explanation into these things but what does it mean to carry on like a pork chop i don't know <laughs> <laughs> why have you never heard that before i feel like maybe i have but obviously i kind of ignored it when what i must have misheard surely no one carries on like a pork chop what does that mean? oh well we do in this segment we often <laughs> carry on like a pork what chop what does that mean Though. It just means that you're you're kind of going on and on and rambling. But why? How is that like a pork chop? I don't know the origin of the word, but to carry um, on like a pork chop is when they just someone just will not stop talking. Well, yeah, that is us. Okay, <clears throat> next one. She'll be right. Mm -hmm. It's quite literally. It's going to be okay. She'll be right. She'll be right, mate. She'll be right, mate. She'll be right, mate. She'll be right. But it's not necessarily about a person, a female person. Even though, yeah, it is it's the just conjugation. Like a situation. Like, it is the conjugation right, of she will. So she will be right, I'm conscious mate. that some people might not even be able to understand our pronunciation that. here. So she, yeah. she'll be right. It just means that don't worry, it'll sort itself out. Yes. This situation will will work out. Yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily about a person. Yes. It's usually more. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, oh, she'll be right. She'll be right, mate. Okay. Weird. Why? Why in know. that format? Here we mm. go. Dead set. It's when you're determined. I am dead set on not what did bailing. You say dead set. No, dead set. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even I can't understand you. No, I'm pretty sure I did say dead, <laughs> dead set. set. I'm dead set on not bailing on the roadie. Okay. Okay. Oka. Oka. As we said at the start, it's just something that's very Australian mm -hmm. or very Aussie. Very Aussie. When someone is, Maggie is not very ocker. I can be. I have moments where. Yes, you can be a bit ocker. Ocker. It's also got connotations of almost like rural, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, outback mm. speak. Ocker. Yeah, Just ocker. very Australian, I think. Yeah. Okay. Hooroo. Hmm? Hooroo. <laughs> Hooroo? Hooroo to you too. <laughs> I don't know where. Hooroo. Hooroo? Hooroo. Rue. Rue, as in, like, I'm thinking RuPaul's. No. Charles, no. No. Uh, Huru. 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 <laughs> um, well, it's Huru. close. Huru. No, Huru means goodbye, actually. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've never heard that. It's like, see you later. Um, right. There you go. Okay. Well, you're doing pretty well, I've got to say. This yeah. is, that well, was one of go. the only ones that you haven't got. Yeah. Okay. Well, and the pork chop. Oh, pork. <laughs> Which apparently we are, so. Okay, here we go. Pork chop. Um, <laughs> gander. Uh, take a gander. Yeah. It's like to take a look at something yeah. or check something out. That is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go and have a gander. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm back. <sighs> You're being a galah. 
no, I'm gone. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that is. <laughs> don't be a gla. <laughs> don't be a gla. Don't be a gla. Yeah, he's being a gla. I have no idea what that is. No? No. Okay, well, gla is a bird. But to be Why a galah... Why would you say to someone not to be a bird? No, because galah kind of means idiot. Why wouldn't... Or bird stupid. Be that's not very nice to that's, birds. <laughs> no, but that's what it means. What about Nelly Furtado, who's like, oh, I'm like a bird, then it's like... <laughs> you're being a you're, galah. You're, well, uh, no, specifically the galah, not the bungee. Is it a type of bird? <laughs> it's a type of bird, yeah. Ah, is yeah. it like a, a particularly not very smart bird? Is that why? How do you not know what a galah... Anyway, we'll come back to that. I'll show you okay. a photo. Um, like the time when Maggie first saw a kookaburra <laughs> and was so freaked out by it. And she was like, yes. there's an owl with a huge beak. They have a very intense stare and they are not they scared no, by people. They're, quite they're like, stare you down even when you're very close to them. It's like, oh. I think, yeah, I think that one was pretty trained because people feed them and things on balconies. Yeah. Anyway. All right. How about birds. this one? I feel yeah, like you're not going to get this next one. There's, also, there's the ibis as well. It's another very Aussie one. Yeah. It's a bin chicken. The bin chicken. Yeah. yeah. You know what a bin is? A bin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trash can. Yes. Mm. And they're called bin chickens because they are always rummaging, rummaging. through the yeah. rubbish. Or the okay, back to the game. Back okay. to the game. Okay. Because you're carrying Not on, like, you're carrying like, a on like a pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. What's the John Dory? Isn't there a fish? Mm. <laughs> Don't. It is a fish. Yes. John Dory is a fish, correct? Yes. Now, what does the sentence mean? Hey, Maggie, what's the John Dory? I'm imagining using context clues mm -hmm. in your tone that is probably like, what's the news? Or like, what's the, what's the happening? What's the story? What's the story? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, yeah. the story, John Dory? But, oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. But what's the John Dory is how it is said in slang to mean what's going on. Yeah. There you go. Uh, no walkers. That's a version of no worries. So it's like, yeah, don't stress. And what is no, no worries? Issues. When how do we like use no, non, problem, no worries? No problem. Like you use it for to say you're welcome. No it's like thank you. Ah, no worries. Like, that is very common. Mm. Way more common than you're welcome. It yes. always shocks me no when we go to America welcome. and people like, say you're welcome. <laughs> All right, that's a terrible accent. No, they're often thank you. you're welcome. They're, they often say uh huh. Which or, is very, uh -huh. which is actually like, sounds very whoa. abrupt to us. It's like, oh, like, you know, when you thank you and they go, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> you should guess what? <laughs> so, in Australia, if you say thank you, there's usually like, ah, oh, uh, no worries. No or, worries. Yeah. Uh, or you're right. Actually, that is uh, another, yeah, yeah. that's a very Australian thing. Uh, is, you're all right. You're right. Which is, you are all right. You are all right. But we say, you're right. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah. No, you're right. No, you're right. <laughs> okay. The, uh, what was the bird? Carrying on like a pork chop. No, what? it was a bird. Glass. You're a galah. <laughs> we are galahs. Um, okay, where are we up to? No wuckers mm -hmm. equals no worries equals you're right. <laughs> this is very clear, I'm sure, to everybody playing along at home. Ready? <sighs> you little ripper. Oh, this is so strange, but a little ripper is like, it's like... <laughs> I was just gonna answer with another, uh, another Aussie thing. Oh, you beaut! Like oh, you yeah. beauty. It's like you something beauty. that is very exciting or something that is really good or really it's like, like you've done well. Oh, you, you know, it's a little. Yeah. Although like. I tell you what the nuance is between those two things. Oh, yeah. So you beauty is just like a general. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Whereas you little ripper is generally directed at the person yeah so doing so something you, exceptional you're a, you little ripper is like you are amazing thanks mm -hmm. for doing that kind yeah. of yeah. yeah um okay here we go this one's a sentence for you to translate Ooh. chuck a yui ah <laughs> it's very fast chuck a yui chuck is to take a yui is a u-turn so <laughs> Because it sounded like it was one word, though. You said yeah. it's like chuck a yui. Oh, it's sorry. like an indigenous word. It's, like, it's not a one word. Sorry. Chuck, chuck a yui. yui. It's to take a sudden U-turn. U-turn. Yes, a U-turn, meaning when you turn your car around. It's like someone's like directing you. Yeah, yeah, and it's so, like, I oh, just chuck a yui. It's like, oh, we missed the entrance. Oh, chuck a we yui. That's very common. Exit. Very common to chuck yeah. a yui. Yeah. And a yui is the U-turn. Yeah. Can I do a yui here? Mm -hmm. Very common. Yui's not allowed. 
here. <laughs> no UEs allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is like what going a beautiful on a flowery language. Yeah. <laughs> so, so romantic. So, so romantic. romantic. Yeah. Um, it's just like French, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's just so beautiful. It just rolls on the tongue Dogs. and makes takes you to another place. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dogs breakfast. <laughs> It's like when something is just a mess. It's like, ah, oh, like that ah. report was a dog's breakfast. Ah, oh, this is a dog's breakfast. This video is a dog's breakfast. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Uh, on your bike. What? I'm just laughing at how Australian that on is. Ya. On ya. On your bike. No, nah, like on ya by itself is like, it's a short oh, version yeah. of good on ya. Which is good on you, which is, there's like layers and layers <laughs> like, of, of unpacking this, um, which is like, well done. Yeah. So Anya is well done. But not in this context. No, I don't know what Anya, what was it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> on your <Anya> bike. <laughs> yeah. On your bike. So Anya, yeah, Anya is like good Anya. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, Anya, mate. Like mm. good Anya, mm. mate. Good on yeah. you, mate. Um, on your bike, it was like, get on your bike. As in, get out of here? Get out of here, yeah. Oh. It's telling someone to go away. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. On your bike, Maggie. Mm, I've, I've never had that said to me. On so, your bike. You know, that's why I couldn't relate. And on your bike is the opposite of hold your horses. <laughs> hold your horses or hold, calm your farm. I hate calm that. Calm your farm. Amy says that to me all the time. If Would I'm you very. Just calm your farm? <laughs> If I'm very excited about something or rushing into something, it's like, calm your farm. <laughs> Slow or, your roll. Or hold your horses, which is also, yeah, those are all like just I calm think down. Maybe, maybe, maybe hold your horses Stop. is like not Australian actually, but I wanted to demonstrate that yeah. hold your horses is the opposite of on your bike because <laughs> on your bike is like on your bike Absolutely. and hold your horses is like, well, just wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And that's yeah, the yeah. end. Hold your horses kind of like pause, just like, yeah. But hold, calm your farm. It's like a, you need to calm down right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And when I was looking I hear at some Aussie slang, mm. the sentence that came up that made me laugh a lot was that someone had written mm. um, online and other people were asking for a translation <laughs> of, I've got a bingle out in Broadie, Toey's on site, but it's chockers in both directions. Ooh. Take it back slowly. Let's see if people can... Okay. Get this I've one. Got a bingle out in Brody. I've got a bingle. We didn't cover bingle out mm -hmm. in Brody. That's a truck. Brody could one. be any. It, I'm imagining it's Broad Beach or like one of or Broadway. So Brody it's, would be a shortening of the name of a town or yeah, place. In this case, it would be Broad Meadows, which is a suburb in Victoria. Could be. It's very likely what it is. Could be Broad Beach, which is a suburb in Queensland. Sure. Anyways, okay, broad meadow. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a, a, a bingle out in Brodie. Bingle, uh-huh, out in Brodie. What's a bingle? Well, actually, do we do we go, well, we can go okay, one yeah. more. So bingle mm -hmm. is when you have a car accident, but it's a small one. So it's just yeah, like. Yeah, a bingle? Yeah, it's not like a major, it's just like a, oh, uh, you know, this was an inconvenience and yeah. you, it's noticeable, but yeah. I've been in a bit of a bingle. Yeah. Um, Toey's on site. Toey. Toey is the tow truck. That's going to come and mm -hmm. help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On site. It's just on site. On site. But it's chockers in both directions. But it's chockers. We, we did chockers. learn that today. In both directions. Yeah. Yeah. Chockers meaning busy. Yeah. So you probably. So now you can speak Australian. You probably, if you're heading that direction, you might want to chuck a Yui. You might want to <laughs> chuck a Yui. <laughs> test. This is a test time. <laughs> it's chockers. So chuck a Yui. You galah. <laughs> If you didn't, because you're glad. If you did, on your mate. Okay, let's stop carrying on like a pork chop. Wow, wow! I have a headache. That was so much. <laughs> that My was so much. Fried. I'm, I'm gonna, so sorry, everybody. So sorry. That was that a is mess. A lot. I mean, we've been in lockdown only. That was for a, a dog's couple. breakfast. It was a dog's breakfast. <laughs> and we've only been in lockdown for a couple of days, and look what is happening to us. Okay, please. I think help us. I think we'll save the infrequently asked questions until next episode and talk about some yeah, games let's instead. talk about some games let's talk about some games oh thank god okay oh. let's talk about some games although someone asked last episode if we yeah. had any aussie slang for games mm. and someone said to me at work 
uh, we were playing a game. We were playing um, Stay Cool at work, which actually went down a treat. Everybody really you enjoyed it. it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was really fun, really stressful. Probably wasn't calming in the work environment, but it was a lot of Just fun. Just what you need, you know? Yeah. Just as a little break Stay uh, cool. from all the stressful work. But someone did kind of say stuff. something during that game that made me think, is that very Australian? Mm. Um, I got thrashed. Oh, uh, yeah. So I wouldn't have called it thrashed i thought it was trashed <laughs> as in like no, I, they mean completely different things oh so are they both valid words things. yeah but for two completely different situations so i always use trashed as in like someone just destroyed me oh, like because they won by wrong. a lot no <laughs> there you go i've been using that wrong the whole time it's thrashed Thrashed is that thrashed what I just you. Yeah, yeah, which is like when you've been devastated yes, point wise, the, like yes. they just they ran circles you. around you. Yeah. yeah, I got thrashed. I'm going to thrash you. Thrashed. That's very violent. No, <laughs> no, but it doesn't mean that in right. an Australian. Okay. Um, and then trashed is really drunk. Oh, yeah, that's another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another trashed. drunk one. Yeah, I'm trashed. Okay. There you go. Or she's trash. They are trashed. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. We've but gone. I, yeah, but I don't know one for game. Well, thrashed. No, but it's not like let's play a thrashed. <laughs> what? That's no. what I mean. No, like a word for game. No, like, no, no. I mean say, a word yeah, that, that you we could use, use during game. during gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or took a beating. That's very broad. That's we're not... going backwards. Um, okay, to the games. Now, the first game that I want to talk about today is a game I mentioned. Melvin in Singapore also sent us a game called Pita to Ni Hiki no. Boku yo inu, which means pieces to sheepdogs. It's a little Japanese game. Um, my understanding is this game, sorry in advance, I think is quite hard to find. Um, he actually sent us his copy. So thank mm, you so yes, much, Melvin. Thank you. Um, it is a two player only game and it is so cute. It is super cute. So cute yeah. because inside the box you'll find little fences and little animals that have all been 3D printed mm -hmm. and the way that you set up the game is that you're going to have two meadows each which are the the lid and the base of the box um, but also a little fenced in area where you're going to be able to score animals or points in. And the way that this game is played is a trick taking game. But instead of having cards, you have a number of different suits, which are the different types of animals. So you've mm. got sheep and cows and wolves. And then they have different numbers printed on them from one to seven. You've also got your own little personal barrier Thing, shade so that your opponent can't see the animals that you have either the type of animal or mm. the number that they are and what's going to happen each round or each trick is that someone is going to play one of those animals so a suit and a number and the other person is going to if they have that animal have to play the same animal or if they don't they can play any animal and the person who plays the highest number wins that trick mm. now what's really interesting about this game and um, for those of you who don't know in japan they really love trick taking games and so there are lots of varied and unique spins on trick taking and this is definitely one of them yeah because it also incorporates a mancala and the mancala is triggered uh, based on the person who loses the round gets they get to pick up all of the animals in one of their two green meadow areas and place them in a counter clockwise direction um, across each of the different player areas and what that means is, is that you are shifting the animals around and ultimately those animals are going to give you points at the end of the game. So you're both kind of pushing them around the mancala. There's the, um, the suit that is the wolves actually scares away animals if it gets placed um, with your opponents uh, or your own actually animals mm -hmm. within the, the fences. So yep. it scares them away. And so you get definitely trying to throughout the game manipulate whether you want to win or lose a trick because if you win you get to take the animals and mm. add more points to your area but if you lose you get to manipulate the game state a lot more and yeah. move the animals around now the tricky thing about this game the other tricky part thing about this game aside from it being a mancala and having trick taking is that there are two halves to this game spring and summer it's played in two seasons mm. 
And in spring, you'll be collecting points. But in summer, you will only score points for summer if you outscore your spring score. Mm. So you need to kind of downplay your score in spring mm. in order to be able to beat your score in summer and therefore have your summer points count. But also, if you are <laughs> able to double your spring points in summer, then you get to double your spring points. So it's a yeah. bit of a confusing way of scoring, yeah. but it's actually really important to your strategy as to when you play all of your yeah. best number number of animals, I guess. Yeah, it's not animals. just about like get the most points or whatever, because like, no, actually you have to kind of plan ahead and go, oh, if I go too hard and immediately, I'm not going to be able to match that, let alone double it let alone. Yes. So there's, and it's often yeah. the difference between winning or losing yeah. if you don't match your points um, between yeah. seasons. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this <laughs> yeah, game. Me too. <laughs> the other thing that we haven't said is like thematically. Oh yeah. You are, we like the two players are two um, shepherd, um, what do you call it? Like the other dogs that are, mm -hmm. yeah, rearing the, the... Sheep dogs. Sheep dogs, That's yeah. Sheep dogs, so yeah. You're, you're kind of rearing the animals and scaring the wolves uh, away. So that's so cute that that's like what like you take the that role of that dog and that's why you're kind of moving the animals around and that's why the points is all about you know getting your uh your humans um uh, appreciation and kind of making them happy and proud of you yeah i really enjoy it yeah and and it's just such a cute little package i will say that the box is definitely not big enough to too small for all the components to, we've stuff. left some yeah. of the components out just so i can hold it up yeah um for this yeah talk because it doesn't stay together <laughs> It yeah, doesn't we'll have stay it together. But it's amazing yeah. that they actually fit everything into this tiny little yeah, box to just, begin with. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you should definitely check this out if you're into trick taking games. Like I said, I think it's a little hard to Very find. It might be yeah. one where you need to find um, a Japanese retailer, or if you're in Japan, pick up you know copies for yourself and your friends. Um, it's a really fast game. Yeah. Um, I think that it took us a few games to get into it, but once once we did and once we started to work out the strategy, you know, you could play a game of this yeah. in like 20 minutes. And yeah, trick-taking, a really fun spin on trick-taking with no cards, yeah. not to mention the Mancala aspect, which I always really enjoy in yeah. games no, as well. Yeah, it's a great game. Yeah, yeah, so that's Peter's Two Sheepdogs. Yeah. And thank you, Melvin, for thank sending you. that to us. It's great. It's awesome. All right. The next game, you should talk about this one because you actually have the one who's played it. Oh, yeah. Team so three. this game is a game that I specifically bought for my workplace. Mm. And it's a game that encourages cooperation and communication. So it is a co-op game, but it is a game that is similar in its co-opness as something like Just One or something like, I'm trying to think of another one off the top of my head. I can't mm. think of one, um, but a game where you're kind of not really counting points. So no. there is a way of scoring, but you're not really considering that. In yeah. this game, it's all about um, having three different people work together to create a structure that appears on cards using bricks. Now, one person is going to be blindfolded mm. and they're going to be the one that physically has to pick up the bricks and put them together into the structure um, as, as it's designed. The shape. So, yeah. yeah. And then there's only one person who can actually see the design or the plan that needs to occur, but they can't talk. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be trying to physically communicate, you know, take the piece that looks like this without saying anything and then put it down or like move it to the left. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got someone who um, actually needs to be able to communicate that to the person who is building so it. So communicate what the person who can see mm -hmm. is trying to demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. So basically someone's doing this and the other person is going, oh, you need to grab the W piece. Yeah. And then the third person is trying to feel for the W mm -hmm. piece and try to put it in the right position. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really actually quite fun. I would say that it's quite um, like a filler style game. Mm -hmm. Like it's very easy to just 
have a quick game of this. Like you could just throw it down on the table, explain the rules. And I think, you know, anyone could have a bit of fun mm. with that yeah. as long as you've got three people to play, of course. Yeah. Um, the advanced versions of the structures are really quite difficult. Mm. Um, so the basic ones are a bit too easy, but then if you go straight to the, the difficult ones, it's mm. quite, it's, is quite a challenge and it's quite funny and everyone's yelling at each other saying, you can't do that, you can't do that. Um, but that is team three. It's a fun little cooperative um, deck dexterity experience nice. um yeah and like i said i bought this for work but actually we've pa played it um with our gaming group just in between games so yeah, yeah that's a cute and interesting one i haven't actually played you it haven't. myself i have seen her play it with our friends mm -hmm. i believe um that one time that we played it here because you've mostly just played it at work whenever we played it here mm -hmm. um i was learning i was reading a rule book you were <laughs> so you were i was just kind of and i was filling time until until you were ready to teach <laughs> that's yes. right so that is team three yeah the next game arboretum um which sounds like we were trying to figure out how how do you say this uh, ar arboretum ar ar arboretum arboretum and i'm like what like a burrito and so that like we there were a lot of burrito jokes there were a lot of burrito <laughs> jokes and then maggie started singing a like, song that was out about oh, a burrito yeah. there's a there's a um christmas song spanish well like south american christmas song if you're from south america you may know it this is the one that goes like actually it might be venezuelan specifically it's like Tuki, 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 tuki. And then it's like, apurate mi burrito. Vamos a ver a Jesus. Just like, hurry up, little donkey. My little donkey, yeah, let's but... go visit Jesus. Because it's a Christmas song, like baby Jesus. But when I was singing it, Amy's like, what? Why are you well, saying burrito because, and Jesus? Because you said, no, you said it's a Christmas song. And I was like, why are you singing about a burrito in a Christmas song? And she's like, burrito means donkey. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. And so then, then we had a lot of things like, yeah, because it's like, hurry up, burrito. So it's so like, so is it like, hurry up, eat, finish eating your burrito so we can go see Jesus? So we can go see Jesus? It, like that Why whole... would you order a burrito yeah. when we're right about, to, we're go about to go see Jesus? Does it work? Did you, did you get a burrito for Jesus? No? <laughs> well, then you better finish it. <laughs> is this a sneak peek into the, the stupidity of our like nights chatting? And and playing games. Anyway, playing games back to our burrito. <laughs> Oh no, I'm very embarrassed by this. I am so sorry. Um, and no disrespect, obviously, for... Not at all. Yeah. Well, you speak Spanish and... No, as in like for Jesus and burrito. Oh, Jesus. Jesus and burrito, yeah. Look, I was just absolute... Anyway, yeah. Arboretum. Arboretum, yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Not about burritos. Um, it's about trees, like ar arbori... Ar like ar arbol is tree in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. So, but the arboretum is like the path, isn't it? That's created yeah. So I believe it's kind of like a um, a specific. Is it like a park or a mm. curated, yeah, path or journeys yes. of different types of trees mm -hmm. where you have visitors come through, and that's essentially what you're doing in this game. Mm -hmm. So you're creating these paths of these different tree types using uh, ascending. I'm talking. I'm going into mechanics now. Okay. Um, um, like ascending order of the cards and the types of trees. And then you're just trying to create the longest path and then have a, an element of be able to have uh, the majority in hand of the that particular path. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, there's, there's nice little elements. I'll let you talk about that. I, I made a mess of that. I made a dog's breakfast of that mechanics explanation. <laughs> but um, yeah, mechanic, like thematically, you're just trying to create the most uh, impressive and longest path for your visitors and be able to actually uh, kind of control it or have claim over it i feel like that is not very thematic <laughs> but like it's quite the game, abstract yeah it's quite abstract it the no i think it comes across it comes a little across? bit yeah 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 a pretty yeah, yeah. line of trees yeah you're um, creating a path of trees yeah, i have yeah. i've wanted to try this for a long time people have been recommending it to us on the channel so thank you for mentioning it um particularly in the way that it scores and i was fascinated by this and really love the elegance of the tension that is built in this game mm. because as Maggie described you are building out longest paths of ascending numbers of trees but what's really interesting is that that path in order to score for you has to have the same type of tree at the beginning and end so you might use a one and an eight or a two and a seven but either way they have to be a matching um, type of tree mm. 
but you only get to score your paths at the end of the game where you have the majority of cards left in your hand specific to that type of tree, yeah. which means that the tension ongoingly in this game is, do I keep a card in my hand to ensure that I can score my path mm. or do I play it into my path and increase the value of that path, which is super, super mm. interesting I love it. Um, the other thing is that, of course, your opponent is trying to make a long path and you want to stop them from scoring. So you want to have the majority in uh, the majority of points for the, the tree that they are trying to score mm. in your hand also. But you're limited to how many cards you can have in your hand, seven at any one time. And so you're kind of stuck between, well, do I stop them from scoring? Do I make sure I can score? Or are you actually focused on your puzzle and optimizing and getting the most points there? Mm. And it's such a simple game because all you're doing is placing, as drawing two cards, placing one down into your Arboretum and then discarding a card. But the level of thinkiness that goes into mm. how you're going to score at the end of the game is actually just so wonderful. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed this game so much. Um, and I can see why it's such a classic and why it's been reprinted. Um, I would like to talk about the version Let's that we have. About this. So first of all, when it was um, when it was redone by Renegade Games, I believe the art was all redone, and so it is Beth Sobel art, and the art is fabulous. Yeah, beautiful. So the, yeah. the illustration of all the different trees mm. is so gorgeous. Yeah. However, <laughs> we I have been meaning to pick this game up for a long time, and we. I've been kind of keeping an eye out on the secondhand market and I saw this version come up and it was the deluxe version. I was like, well, why not? Why wouldn't I get the deluxe version? And hilariously, it comes in this beautiful, beautiful wooden box. Beautiful wooden Absolute, box. Absolutely. Yes. No like qualms with the box. Oh, the box, look at gorgeous. that. It's so yeah. nice. Wooden box. And then it's got this purple velvet on the inlay. Mm, yes. Um, Maggie yeah. will show you some photos, I'm sure. It's got the pouch it's got um, that most people are like, why do you need? What do I don't know why there's a pouch in there. Usually when you have a pouch, you assume that it's because you're going to have some kind of random elements in there that. Yeah, I think it's so like, you can take the cards away I out of what I said. The that's, the <laughs> that's like, well, it was wanna, a good reason. If you want to take them with you to your local Arboretum and play Arboretum at your local Arboretum, then just put them in the bag. Well, if you're going to take this version outside, though, it better mm. not be sunny because the cards let's talk about the cards the, what do you, now, call them? you can like, insert here a, a photo of all the cards but the cards are foil yeah they're foil cards and they are very reflective this silver reflective rainbow technicolor yes dream coat yes of it's a lot <laughs> It is a lot. It's a lot from my eyeballs. It is a lot. I love, actually, in. I was reading on BGG that someone said that it was reminiscent of an 80s casino, <laughs> the, the gaudiness of an 80s casino. And uh, I actually, when I first saw it, I was like, this game They look great when you just look at it. Yeah. yeah, but no, they, they, as in they look, they, when you first open it, you're like, oh, that's interesting. That wow. Like, but yeah. then it starts sort of sinking in. It's like, wait, but why? Why do you need for like a tree and like, well, I think why do you need them to be so blinging? And then you start kind of going, actually, it does make it harder to see the trees. <laughs> it's kind of Because hilarious. of the contrast. And then when you're playing. When you're playing. Okay, so in this game, it's really important that you can see the colors of the trees and distinguish <laughs> yes. between them, particularly when you're looking across the table at your opponent's trees. Yes. And I imagine <laughs> that gets worse with, you know, higher play accounts. Yes. It's really hard to distinguish. You're blinded <laughs> by it. And, and often, like, it doesn't really matter we're playing. So it's like, even if you're playing with just lamp lighting or you know heaven forbid you're outdoors with with actual sunlight you get these flashes of blinding <laughs> reflection that it actually for me it actually gave me he headaches like I often was, get a headache yeah. if there's like a very bright light because it's like my um my eyes are trying to adjust and they're kind of opening and closing opening and closing and that was happening constantly to the point where it's like by the second game in a row, I'm like, I, I have to take a break. I can't. Like, yeah. I need to I was go like, again, it makes like, I actually physically I cannot. can't. Yeah. I, um, yeah. So, interesting I enjoy choice. the game, though. Like, I the love game the game. I love the game, and I'm definitely keeping the game. 
But I don't we know need about some the foil cards. cards. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think foil. some people who did pre-order this deluxe version ended up getting rid of the foil cards and buying a regular version and then storing it in this box, yeah. which is not ideal. Um, but I can totally see why you would mm. want to have a copy of this game. I like. I really love it. Right, I'm really yeah. looking forward to teaching it to a bigger group. Obviously, we can only play it with two being in lockdown at the moment. I also need to feel like I need to say it's not a thematically immersive game because <laughs> before I did sort of. Uh, defend that it is, you know, there's elements of reminiscent of the theme. It's obviously fairly uh, numbers abstract, kind mm. of different colors, different suits. Mm. But there is a little nod to like, oh yeah, like you are creating a bit of a path and it has to make sense in terms of the type of tree. So I, I really like I'll give um, it for that. The scoring condition in particular is the most exciting part yeah. about the game mechanically. And it reminds me a lot of Biblios. So mm -hmm. that feeling of in Biblios where at the end of the game, you're not quite sure who's going to have the majority. Yeah. That's the same in this game. And it's really, it, it really makes or breaks your game if you, you know, win or lose that majority scoring at the end. So I really love it for that reason. The mm -hmm. cards... I find so are we gonna say something. Oh, no, I was gonna say because it's like it's interesting with um, Biblios because I, I actually enjoy this more than Biblios, even though it's a, there's a lot of similar I think that's elements. because in Biblios there's more player interaction, like the stacking of the deck uh, the stacking of the market and things like Maybe, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so Well you tend to like games where you have your own puzzle. Yeah, that's true. Where you're building something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in Biblios you're not really building that's anything. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um but anyway solved. Solved. <laughs> Mystery solved. Anyway, but this game is fabulous. Um, I definitely want to hang on to it. The cards just, we, even though we, we kind of saying that the, about the foil cards being a negative, they made us laugh so much. I, I remember I got of... down, I lay down on the table and they all looked rainbow, but then I could, you know, because of the angle, they were all like shimmering. But then I was like, now I cannot see what color the trees are. Yeah. So anyway, a fun adventure. Fun game the though. The deluxe fun edition game. of Arboretum. Get the regular cards. Get the regular and cards. Spoil cards. All right, next game. Next game. Next game is a another two-player game called Glasgow. Now, Glasgow is based on Glasgow in Scotland. And so this is sort of taking place in the 18th century where you are helping. You're one of the merchants trying to help build the city, which I believe was one of the first grid cities uh, built in Europe. And so, yeah, just wanting to make it a, a great, prosperous town. What you're going to be doing is you're, I'm like, I keep feeling like I'm taking, like trying to go into mechanics and it's like, just stick to your lane. Stick, like, <laughs> stick just, to your lane. <laughs> is that, a, is that a, an Aussie thing as well? Stick to your lane? I don't know. Anyways. Um, but yeah, so you're going to be doing a lot of collecting resources so that you can get contracts and Hold build. On. Wait, okay, if you're going to do the mechanics, you've got to do it right. Because this game is oh. based on a rondelle, and everybody oh. knows that I love a rondelle. Um, I love a rondelle. Mm -hmm. In this rondelle, you are moving your meeple around. It's a two-player only game um, to collect different resources. The trick of this rondelle, like a lot of other rondelles, is that you can only, your turn is dictated by where you are in that rondelle. So if you are coming last, you get to go again until you overtake your opponent mm. and then your opponent gets to move. Yeah. Which means that you can have the option of jumping ahead to get what you want mm -hmm. or staying behind and kind of picking up all of the dregs, which is a very Australian term, yeah. the leftovers uh, and the bits and pieces that they didn't want to collect along the way so you can get more resources. Now, the reason why you may want to jump ahead is because in this game you are going to be visiting different architects to buy with your resources different buildings that are then going to be a little tile placement game that occurs in the inner circle of the rondelle. Mm. In the inner circle you're going to be placing tiles in rows and columns. Part of it is to do with set collection so yep. um, at the some end of, of the game some of the buildings will score based on how many of that type of building you have. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be about the position of the placement whether it's in it's positioned in the corner of the grid mm. or um, whether it has certain types of tiles surrounding it. Um, and there's an, another special type of um, building which triggers every time another building is placed in that same row or mm. column. The and factories, they, yeah. the factories generate resources for you to then mm. help you go on, go forth and buy more buildings. So yeah. that is essentially the way that the game is played. For me, the tension comes in the jumping ahead versus staying behind. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, 
much more relaxed than I yeah. would have thought, and it's yeah. much simpler than I thought. Yes, it does feel very simple. Mm. I found it moderately satisfying. It's almost like it's a bit of a puzzle to me why I wasn't more thrilled or engaged when I was playing it. Um, and I still don't quite know why, because like it's we're, you're technically doing a lot of things that I love doing in games like that, planning for the thing that you're going to build and collecting those resources and making sure that you know you're converting things. And, um, and yet, as we were playing, I don't know if yeah, maybe it was because there's a bit of a, you always feel like there is something that you can do, so mm. you're never really getting blocked out of things. But even then, maybe it's because it feels like the the options that you have are not very thrilling or they're mm. yeah so yeah for me I yeah I liked the game I didn't particularly like I wasn't super excited about the game I think that there's there's not much that's new here um, but it is a nice combination of mechanics but it, it's quite a as I mentioned quite a relaxed game there's not yeah. a lot of tension in it Maggie and I tend to like games where it's quite tense if we look at like Arboretum, for example, the mm. tenseness that comes in with, uh, am I going to score or not? You just don't get yeah. any of that here. It's more of a very chill experience. I still yeah. enjoyed playing it, um, yeah. but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it didn't give me that kind of competitive edge that, yeah. that I like. Yeah. Um, but that is Glasgow. Glasgow. Um, yeah. By Lookout Games. Two player look only game. Yeah. Um, and the final game we want to talk about is a little bit bigger than a small box. Um, this is a game that a lot of people would be familiar with if you're watching. Um, a game called Parks um, by Keymaster Games. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another game that was kindly sent to us um, by Abby, one of yes. our viewers, uh, when the call went out for postcards again. Uh, she wouldn't take no for an answer <laughs> in terms of sending us this game because yeah, it is you. a... Thank you so much. Mm. It, it has been a glaring omission in our collection. Mm. Um, a lot of people have recommended this game to us. I think that originally we didn't pick it up because we thought it might be too simple for us. But actually there was a lot more going on in this game mm. than we expected. But firstly... It is so stunning. Like It, it is, is beautiful. I think it yeah. would have to be one of the most beautiful productions yeah. of a game actually that I've ever seen. And the fact that the um the game trays inside yeah. are the little acts kind was, of shape. It was shape. one of the best like unboxing experiences that I've had in a long time because mm -hmm. it's like you kind of open it. It's just beautifully laid out. You learn about the is it fifty nine parks series, which is the the art series that the cards are based on. Um, then it's got a diagram on the side of the box of how to repack the box, and I was like. This is what every single game needs, please. How do you repack the game into it mm -hmm. and have that on the side? Don't have, don't make me look for it on you know somewhere in the rule book. It's like it's the most intuitive place. Mm -hmm. And every component, every way, as you said, like the way the trays fit together is just so beautiful and just so pleasant to like yeah, play the, with. The too. artwork of the tarot-sized cards that mm -hmm. have the different national parks on them, yeah. they were all done by different artists yeah. and they are just stunning to look at. Um, I often, like I just found myself kind of staring at the game a yeah. lot of the time and looking at these beautiful illustrations. So the way that the game works is that you take, um, you're kind of playing as different hikers, mm -hmm. taking a trip through these national parks and you have different worker placement spots mm -hmm. on, you know, it's not quite a rondelle, but it works in the same way in that you are only going in one direction along the hiking trail. And if your opponents reach the end of the trail before you, you're going to have to jump forward to the end mm. of the trail. So you can go as fast or as slow as you like. Um, but you're only going to be able to go as slow as the slowest pl next player, yeah, <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, but you're also controlling two hikers. Mm. And one thing that I really liked about the mechanics in this game and what made it the most interesting to me is the timing of which you move each of those hikers. So. Mm. Because if one of your hikers is blocking a spot in front of you, then you might want to move it out of the way first so that you can hit up that yeah. worker placement spot again. Mm. Um, likewise though, if you're in front of your opponent and you know that they might want to go there, then you might want to stay put and mm. keep that hiker there and move yeah. the hiker behind so that they lose the opportunity to go into that spot. So you're constantly thinking about what order do I want to move my hikers and how quickly along the trail. Mm. Now, the different spots in the different trails are very simply going to either allow you to do an action or allow you to collect resources. You need resources in this game to be able to visit the different parks um, and when you visit the parks they're going to be giving you a significant proportion of the victory points in this game 
but you can mm -hmm. also use the action spots to um, collect gear. Gear are the cards that are going to allow you to um, have a special ability throughout the game that's going to make things easier for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the, what are the water canister cards? Yeah, Look, your, can, your canteen. Canteen, yeah. canteen, thank you. The canteen cards, um, which allow you to get resources and mm -hmm. have additional actions when you fill them with water, which is really cute. Yeah. They stay with you and they get emptied every round of the water and then you've got to fill them back up again to get things. So yeah. um, th that's the basis of the game. Obviously, you're trying to get the most points by visiting the most parks, but also taking the most photos. Yeah. So another action you can do is take photos of all the places you're visiting mm. and you actually get like a physical little yeah. photograph, yeah, um, which is super cute. And I really enjoyed like pulling one out and kind of looking yeah, at what it was. Yeah, because they're all different. They're like, all different. it's yeah. a photo of this. It's a photo really of that. Really cute. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I also played it solo. It does have a solo mode, mm -hmm. which I found really interesting because um, when you play, you're playing against rangers and they're very, I think the way that they've kind of implemented the AI in it is I didn't find it difficult or arduous, but it I off it felt like either it was too easy and they were kind of lagging behind and I was getting to sort mm -hmm. of do everything that I wanted, or all of a sudden if you triggered one of the action they they have these sort of action cards that they can trigger if they collect enough uh, water droplets or the little sun um, resources. It like it, they can be brutal. It's like and they can do things that are so mean and that would never actually happen uh, in the multiplayer game. So it almost just felt a bit like it's a, kind of like a different experience. I definitely preferred it as a multiplayer. Um, it is. I love how it it is fairly thematic in that. Yeah, you're mm. kind of going in your in your on your hike and you are collecting. I was trying to find the the thematic. Uh, sense for why are you collecting like trees and mountains and then using that to pay for the parks that you're visiting and so in my mind because it's not really covered in the, <laughs> in the rule book they just told me just like collect tokens like well you're not really meant to be taking stuff from a park that you visit and then using it to pay for your entry into it. Like, that doesn't make sense. But in my mind, it's like, oh, maybe when you're hiking, you're like, ah, oh, you're taking in, or like the takeaway is that, ah, oh, that tree is so beautiful. Or like, ah, oh, I got, you know, this sort of sunny spot is so, or that mountain is just breathtaking. And so it's like, well, if you love mountains and trees and sun, you are gonna love this park. So mm -hmm. it's like, that's how you're like, yeah, that's what makes you decide and kind of go and collect. Sort of kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like all the components, the, the experience of playing it is it's really nice. And never felt like there's a this moderate tension, mostly in that whole like you're blocking each other and mm. um, but um, you'd never feel super stressful. Like no, and I stressed. should say again, because we've been in lockdown and kind of not seeing too many people in the last couple of weeks. We've only played it at two players. Yes. Um, and I can imagine that that becomes so, a, a bit yeah. more tense when there's more players, like yeah. any kind of worker placement game. Um, I, I really love that a proportion of the proceeds of this game sale um, goes to the National Park Service. Mm. That is amazing. And also the fact that they talk a lot about sustainability in the rule book. And um, obviously this was just made with such passion and care. Yes. I can also see that this would be a great gateway game for mm. um, a lot of, like I can immediately think of um, a lot of friends who really enjoy hiking and getting outdoors yeah. and I think that this will really draw them in I think that they'll really engage with the theme but also it's not too aggressive as a starting point yeah. um uh, one of my favorite mechanics in here is also as always the um the season cards I love an event that um it changes <laughs> do love events. I really do love an event particularly ones yeah. that affect everybody and yeah. they affect that round of the game because it has to you've got to keeps you kind of thinking yeah. on your feet adds a bit of like kind of change something and new disrupts something to disrupts keep your plan yeah. yeah yeah so i like we will definitely be keeping this in our collection it's a beautiful game yeah. um thank and you abby like, for sending goodness it to us. like yeah. a theme that's not you know the stuff that because we're very picky with theme we are so like, we're like we're not really into like space or aliens or um like 
battles and, and fantasy and stuff, which then limits a lot of it does stuff. Limit, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending it to us, Abby. Yes. It will be, um, yeah, as I mentioned, staying in our collection. It's a beautiful game. And I, I actually am interested to see what the expansions bring to the game. So if you've had experience with the expansions, please drop us a comment um, down below and also send us some FAQs for next episode because even though we didn't cover any this episode, we will yeah. get back to that yeah. next week. Um, this, this week, uh, sorry, next fortnight, mm -hmm. this time you had to listen to us go on and on and on like a pork chop. Yeah about our Aussie slang but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope yeah. you um, picked up some new sayings yes uh, but yeah thank please you please be careful when trying them out with friends uh, yes they may not have the context of what Ooh. you're trying to say to them yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you I'm going to go put my tracky dacks on and <laughs> yeah. uh, relax actually no we might go outside for our two hours a day yes um, but have yeah thank you to everybody for who's a hike. Not to a beautiful mountain, but just around the block. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who sent us a postcard. Um, yes. It just is so, I can't even describe how meaningful that yeah. is to us that you would go to the effort to do that. Um, and just to read about, uh, you know, how you've watched the channel, how you came mm. across the channel or, you know, what the content means to you or what the hobby means to you has been really special. And it's great to have an insight into all of these wonderful cities um, that you're watching from. So yeah. thank you so much. And we will be back in a couple of weeks, more small talk. And this week we'll be back with back chat. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much and talk to you soon. Bye, Bye for now. Bye.